There are a lot of questions at the end about how we honor our dead. A lot of times there is this idea that if we don't give them something that is grand of this dunya on the way out, that we're somehow doing a disservice to them, that we're not honoring them properly. A lot of people are surprised to know that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited Muslims from visiting the grave. Inni nahaytukum an ziyarat al khubur. The only time the Prophet ﷺ allowed people to visit the graves initially in Islam, for the majority, in fact, of his time that he was on earth, was when they would go to bury people. Why did he do that, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because most of the innovations in religion surround the dead. And of course, going into the realm of innovation is something where it could even be blameworthy. And he wanted to, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, solidify tawheed and all the understandings of monotheism before reopening that door to the people to where they could go and visit the graveyards again. And it was interesting because the Prophet sallallahu went, and this is very rare actually in usul, in fiqh, in jurisprudence, to go from prohibited to recommended. The Prophet ﷺ went from Inni nahaytukum an ziyarat al qubur I used to forbid you from going to the graveyard, but now I recommend you go and visit it. Why? So that we're reminded of death. So what's missing in the equation? Did the Prophet ﷺ say your loved ones are missing you because they're lonely now that you're not visiting them? Or was it for our purpose that at that point, the creed had settled enough to where the Prophet ﷺ felt comfortable in saying, go and visit the graves now. There is no fear at this point of people introducing into their religion the innovations that have led so many people astray. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all of those things. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from doing that which is sinful and harmful to them or to us. Because death is such a serious and heavy matter. And there is so much that surrounds it. And you can really get caught up in a lot of things. So once you open the door, to, for example, to decorating the graves, if there was good in that, the Sahaba would have done that. You know, if you've Googled the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and you saw this grand tomb, it's actually not real, it's a fake picture, right? Even the Prophet ﷺ did not want anything built on his grave. On top of that, the Prophet ﷺ, what? He said that the Prophet should be buried where they pass away. One of the things that the proofs of prophethood is how the Prophet ﷺ died. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded for himself to be buried in the home of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where he's inaccessible to the people at that point. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that those who came before you took the qubur of the Anbiya, the people of the book took the qubur of the Anbiya as uh, places of masajid, as places of worship. He didn't want that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the graves become places of worship. If there's anyone who deserves the grandness of it all, it's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he didn't want it Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. By the way, his grave became a part of the masjid, not by design, but by the expansion of the masjid. Hujurat were outside and the masjid expanded to where the graves became part of the structure of the masjid. It was not always like that or set up that way. So the point is, dear brothers and sisters, this exterior will go back to the dirt and be consumed by the dirt, just like everything else of this world. I'll actually never forget it. There was a family that lost their daughter very tragically. She was probably 11 or 12 years old, a long time ago. And it was a car accident. I remember the way that they made it a point to try to fix what they could, the makeup, the dress and everything, and even trying to put a smile and SubhanAllah, like it, it actually hit the father as a realization. So what am I doing? These bodies are vessels of this world. They go back to being part of the dirt of this earth. We're not this, nor are we what we put on top of the grave, nor is that of benefit, nor are we the rituals and the festivals, nor do your loved ones care if you have food or if you put the pictures up and do ceremonies for them. And that's all worldly and it's of no benefit to them whatsoever. And subhanAllah, we are a people that believe that the smallest amount of sadaqah when given sincerely is a mountain of good on the day of judgment. Every dollar that could be spent to instead feed someone that is hungry, to go into a hospital, to go into da'wah, to go into education, is more valuable than a dollar that's spent on the exterior of that grave. Every moment that is spent doing one of the rituals is a moment away from du'a and a moment from the legislated things that benefit their souls after they pass away. It's also very natural that we start to grow these attachments and we start to think, are we honoring them properly? All of us that have lost people that are beloved to us, do the things that you think they would be pleased with at this point. You have to realize that shaitan is always gonna pull you away from action. And naturally a person will have a lot of regrets with those that pass away. They'll remember every argument, they'll remember the shortcomings, they'll say, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. To dwell on that will not guide you to istighfar for yourself, nor sadaqah or dua for them. And the dua for your parents after they've passed away and the sadaqah for your parents after they've passed away, when they no longer can do those things for themselves are, I mean, I don't want to say they're more valuable, 
and more beloved than the moments of good that you had when they were alive, but they're so special. So Rasulullah calls us to action. The message to the person who still has their parents alive, don't wait till your parents die to honor them, right? And then to regret the way that you treat them. The message to the person who loses their parents is now that they're gone, make up all of those deficiencies and increase, 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 increase. The message to the person who lost one of their parents is one gate of Jannah has shut for you, flock to the other gate and keep it open and honor that gate as well, as long as you can. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that which is beneficial to them and beneficial to us. Allahumma ameen.